Hello. Hi. Yes. How are we doing, guys? Uh, happy whenever this comes out because I have not said a specific, excuse me a specific time as to when this comes out. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dave Squeaky Wheels, aka DJ Squeaky Wheels, aka the Wristed Wonder. Um, I don't know. There's only so many nicknames for it to not sound conceited. Um, this is a solo, uh, quick solo podcast. I haven't done one in a while. Uh, I got a new laptop. I had some upgrades just in general in my life. Um, so it's nice to be back uh, to kind of put uh, this out for you guys. Um, let's see. I, I haven't done one of these in quite some time. Uh, a few years ago, at least. I I've attempted before, but it just didn't feel right. Didn't feel organic. So this is going to be one uh, where I'm just going to kind of just let you guys know what's been happening. Uh, some future prospects, whatever. I don't know. It's fine. It's not to sound conceited or anything. I'm just trying to kind of... Uh, map out some things and you know it's e I think uh, it's a Tony Robbins thing I have to double check this but where they say it's easier if you can just map it out and when you tell people that you're going to do something you stick to it more as opposed to if it's just a willy-nilly well you know these are my this is my goal and this is my thing and da, da, da. it just seems to be a little more uh, have a little more magnitude to it um, something that uh, when I was at the Y works we called it mind mapping not sure uh, if anybody's familiar with mind mapping. It's basically just like a spider web. Uh, you have something in the middle, you have a goal, something that you want to achieve, and then uh, I guess the map is just a way of uh, steps that you're going to take to achieve that goal. So if it's losing weight, um, the one of the maps could be like getting up in the morning, you know, stop eating uh, said snack food, you know, be diligent with this, do weights at this time, that time, whatever. Um, just to kind of have a barometer in terms of where you are and uh, I think that's all very key and uh, oftentimes we have living examples as well which I think uh, is, is way more helpful than just it's one thing for your parents or uh, the people you care about you to tell you what's going to happen but it's another thing to physically see it when you can actually quantify it and I recently did a Facebook post where I met a, a young kid named Lucas um, he uh, I met him Let's see, this is, this would be Friday. So I met him about a week ago, a week and a half ago, at one of my favorite sushi places, uh, on a roll Sushi in Windsor, Ontario. Shout out to them. Uh, also, uh, you definitely get the lunch special. It's a great deal. Uh, I'm not getting cutbacks, I just love his shit. But I was there, and uh, I had just canceled my uh, my booking. I canceled like my plans for the night. I'm like, let me just go out, get a few drinks, just kind of unwind, decompress. And I went to honor roll, and I'm sitting at the bar in my usual spot, and in walks this family. I could tell they were from the States just because there, there's like a natural, uh, you know, dialect or like a natural accent. The Michigan accent famously, you know, my, my famous uh, example is hat, cat, bat, you know. If any one of those three words, they say hat, cat, or bat, uh, that's how I know they're from the Midwest, Ohio, or Michigan, or something like that. And there's a family of about five. There's a mother, uh, there's a dad and a, and a mom and three little boys, and they all sat together, you know, the, the little kid was hyperactive, he was messing around with the chopsticks, you know, he put him up his nose, and, you know, was pretending like he was a lobster, because it's it just funny, uh, <laughs> kids are very innovative in that regard, man, I, I, I sometimes think, uh, you know, you, you see, like, some of these innovations, scientific innovations, where they base, uh, how they're going to assist people, because I guess that's kind of the, uh, projection, is that we're going to have robots who, help us in the house, kind of like Rocky IV did, you know, when he's just, like, coming in and bringing, the, bringing Polly a beer or whatever. Uh, but anyways, I digress. So they sit down at the table, and I'm just there minding my own business, chatting with the bartender, doing doing whatever. And as I turn to go to the bathroom, the mom turns and says, excuse me, do you have arthrogryposis? And arthrogryposis, for those of you who don't know, uh, I talk about it, I used, I used to do an old bit about it on my act. It's Basically, uh, it's a uh, cousin to arthritis and fibrosis. It, it literally means curved or hooked joints, if you look at the translation. Uh, it affects everybody differently because you could have a perfectly functional body, but one or two joints uh, could mess up, I guess, the way that you... It, it basically, it inhibits movements. It inhibits uh, the way you can manipulate your environment. So, with myself, it's most of my major joints. Uh, I've met a girl in... London, Ontario, it was at a summer camp, like a leadership summer camp or whatever. They have those uh, for people with disabilities, you know, just so you know, you ain't the only one. 
Um, and she, she had like, I guess her knees were kind of a little more, uh, pressed in and like she had wrists that were similar to me. So I guess that's kind of the, uh, defining feature uh, that I can identify. But, uh, she turned and at first it really took me off guard because that's not the, the type of question that I'm used to hearing from people. Normally it's like, is it CP or is it this? Or they kind of go for like the big three in terms of, uh, disabilities. Not that there's a big three, but you can kind of see people and, and kind of, uh, decipher what what their issue is so she turned to me and asked me that question and I paused for a minute I, I made like whatever quick joke just a dumb joke I do just kind of deflect but then I said yeah I do and she invited me over to the table and when I went to the table uh, I met her son and I met a, a couple of her other sons that you know kid, kids will introduce you to themselves uh, you know you'll, you'll even the shy ones man like they, they definitely uh, they definitely aren't shy about asking questions and as the night went on, we just talked to each other and about the uh, the challenges that you face. I hate the word challenge because everybody's got them. It's not it's not uh, exclusive to one group or the other. That's why I hate when people want to quantify just to make their thing seem the most important. We've done that throughout history. Not not to belittle anybody's situation, but it's like it's definitely all relative, and it's definitely um, what you want to quantify it as. So. Anyways, I'm sitting there, I'm chatting with them, and uh, I was just astonished how Lucas was just doing the same things that I was doing at that age, and it's not like I didn't have a support system, that's not at all what I'm getting at, but I was sitting here going, you ha you, it makes a difference when it comes from a peer, or when it comes from somebody who knows uh, the, the trials and tribulations that you go through as opposed to it being your parents because yeah your parents have like life experience they love you they want you to succeed but it resonates a lot more when it's somebody uh who's been through uh, the woods uh, for lack of a better term so like i said we chatted for a little bit he was great um he was telling me about like what he was doing in school what he wants to do he wants to work with computers uh loves video games you know uh you know he, he Basically, like, I could tell that he was going through the same thing I went through, but just by, less by little things, like how he was holding the glass and, like, how we learned to write, because uh, there's, like, a way you can hold the pen. You can hold it with your left wrist, and you basically uh, like wedge the pen with your thumb, and there's an index finger, and you use your pinky finger on that hand, but you also use the other hand as well. That's why uh, it's so it's so crucial to have a completely functioning body like that, or to kind of have uh, a system in place. And he's already developing these systems, so I basically just gave him some tips of like what I learned when I was young, uh, because I, I did the, I had to do this all by myself. There's nobody else to give you that type of guidance and that type of direction. So whatever I could do was good. You know, I'm not sure if it resonated. I'm, only time will tell. But he could not have had a better support system with his family, his brothers. I could tell there there's beautiful people in his life and. It's something that you can't take for granted, man. They they will take you out of some dark, dark places, and they will, they they will be, they will tether you to the rest of what's going on to your environment. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's it's still hard to believe. I'm still kind of uh, processing all of it because we took the picture. You know, I, I did the thing with the wrist. Uh, I used to have a little bit where it's like you know I don't fist it, I wrist it, and uh, you know, that's we did like the the wrist bump, and that that's the picture. You can see it online. Um, it just, I don't know, it, it made me reevaluate my own bullshit, for lack of a better term. Uh, we can all get caught up, we all get caught up in our own, the, mo the momentum of our lives, but that really put it in perspective in so many different ways, in so many different categories. So, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was one of those instances where I found myself being thrust in a position where it's not something that you ever can foresee yourself really even the people around you they could say oh you could help people you could do this and that but i don't know i don't know it, it's it's hard to really explain guys it's hard to really put in words uh i'm just really fortunate to have met that family they're a beautiful family again go on my facebook dave squeaky wheels it's all there uh on all my social medias but that's not why i'm here it's not why i'm here um you know i guess having this one-way conversation with y'all Basically, just sitting here in my underwear. This is the only job where you can just sit in your underwear, uh, you know, and get your message out. And, and you have the same uh, same voice as anybody else. But, uh, I don't know, a couple of years, uh, that wasn't really sure what I was doing. 
I'm just now, uh, I've been at CJAM for a while. That's been going pretty great. Um, they ha they still have a music and CD library, and every time I feel like I brush past the CDs, I feel like I'm going to rearrange the musical genres and just the uh, the alphabetization by accident, just because they have like little tags that stick out. Um, everybody's pretty cool. The, the, the environment's really nice. Um, but I never would have got that job without uh, the YMCA, and the YMCA uh, was really, it's really a place where you have time to do self-inventory. And that's what I really want this podcast to be about. Taking self-inventory, letting things happen when you put the right energy out in the universe, making having it be serendipitous whenever you try and force or kind of uh, insert yourself too much into a situation. I find it typically doesn't pan out because not just that you're putting up the wrong energy into the universe, but also you're trying to force something that should be organic. So when I went there... Um, I had applied for the uh, disability one. It was, uh, what exactly was the name? Oh, she's, uh, anyways, it was, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. There was the Y Works, which is the one I eventually got into. It's for people with employment barriers uh, and just to kind of assist them if they have any issues like that. And that really, one sec, one sec. It's called the Y Opportunities uh, Program. So it's set up to have people with uh, uh, disabilities, a range of disabilities, or anybody that has employment barriers. It just gives them a crash course uh, on how uh, to navigate the job, uh, the job search and how they can kind of condense and, and identify where their skills uh, come into play and uh, just kind of get over the employment barriers. So I initially applied for that. And again, it's funny how life works because I, I did not get into that program initially but I got a call that same day for the Y Opportunities program. I started the very next day and I'm not gonna lie I was pretty nervous. I hadn't been in school at that time for a good couple of years or, or something where it was just standardized. Uh, get up in the morning, do whatever, go back home. Uh, again, any any job you do and you hear this a lot, make sure that it's a job of passion. You know, you have to do what you have to do to cover uh, your bases and you know, you handle, you handle what you have to handle. But if you can, definitely go for something that you have passion about. Uh, it makes a world of a difference. Uh, so I just went there. I went there the next day. There's people from all walks of life, uh, people who had just came to the country. There's people who maybe down their luck, had issues uh, you know, with family and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to, obviously no names, not going to out nobody. But what it did was it really put me at ease. Uh, it made me realize that you're not, literally you're not the only one going through something. Uh, in fact, there's many people who have uh, way more trials and tribulations than you. And uh, just to go back to the mind mapping thing, there's little cheat codes and like little um, things that they taught you. Like even just the, the most simple thing, like having a to-do list or like writing something in your phone where if you have an appointment, there are little things like that where I was just slipping, man. And my mom uh, also told me this too, you know, a, a cluttered room is a cluttered mind. And, you know, my room's, it's, it's still not great. Uh, it's still, it still has to be uh, some upkeep and whatnot. I'm probably going to have a yard sale because there's a bunch of shit in my basement that I don't need anymore and I don't use. Uh, I haven't used for a while, like wrestling figures and old jerseys. Um, but uh, anyways, I digress. So that's that was about an 8 to 12 week program. Uh, everybody had applied for different jobs uh, throughout the community. And there were some people that were getting, uh, you know, bites here and there, uh, to use a fishing term. And... I had applied for maybe 15 to 20 different places, and uh, I'm gonna actually, we're actually gonna, I'm gonna do a show with Cam Wells, he's a guy uh, who I started at CJM with, he has a show called Handy Link, I actually just got off the phone, uh, was doing an interview with him, and uh, one of them was that, uh, one of the facts he told me, because I always learn something from him, this is why it's also good to be around people who don't, didn't grow up the same as you, maybe have different backgrounds and perspectives, because he told me that uh, up until a certain point, they were they like they were paying people with disabilities uh, way below the minimum wage for the longest time. Uh, don't quote me on this; I, I don't have a timeline in front of me. But uh, it just goes to show you that we take so much of what we have for granted, and literally the opportunity and the people that you need are sometimes right in front of you. So that being there really put it into perspective. Um, the instructors couldn't have been more helpful; couldn't have been more resourceful teaching you how to use those online resources, those community resources, which 
that proved to be even more valuable. So uh, shout out to them, man, because it, it was really, it's really helpful. It's really helpful, and, and it really kind of uh, pushes pushes you to kind of just be the best version of yourself. Which leads into my next thing. I, I'm going to move uh, shortly. I'm still going to be in Windsor for a bit, just going to move uh, to a different location. I feel like I've been away from stuff. Uh, I've been in my room at uh, my grandma's place for a while. Uh, you know, a couple other people have lived here as well. My aunt's lived here for a bit. We've had cousins stay as well. I just feel that it's time. It's time to kind of uh, turn the page, go into that next chapter. Uh, again, I'm probably going to have to sell some stuff or at least uh, kind of uh, see what it, see what's not necessary, see what's at it, what's going to add to my life and take away from it. So there's going to be updates with that. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I honestly think that I'm just going to leave it off right there. We're going we're gonna to do a couple, at least I'm going to try and do at least one or two of these per week. It's, it's so much fun. I, I miss checking in with you guys. We're going to have some guests. I might have my grandmother on here at some point in time just to kind of give you guys a little more backstory. Um, and then, yeah, I think we're just going to go from there and see what happens. And again, thank you guys. Uh, I, I still see some people liking my page on Facebook. That's really great. Thank you for doing that. And uh, we're just going to stop from here because I think literally Garage Band is telling me you have no more space left. So thank you so much, everybody. This has been the Squeak Clean Unclean Podcast. Uh, I guess volume two or whatever because I stopped counting the episodes. Um, a, lot, a few of the last episodes I did was uh, with Josh Haddon and a, a few of our late friends. So uh, God rest their soul. Shout out to them. And uh, yeah, I will post this later and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, do the best you can. Do the best you can. Uh, I try not to watch the news because I try and keep some semblance of sanity just for my well-being. Um, but yeah, focus on what you can control. It's the best way to live life, man. Don't A lot, a lot of what we preoccupy ourselves with is just clutter. It really doesn't have anything to do with us. Um, you still have to get up. You still have to be proactive and take, take inventory. Take self-inventory. So I, ur I implore all of you guys to do that. Thank you for listening. This has been the Squeaky Unclean Podcast. I am DJ Squeaky Wheels. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.